Welcome to another Advent of Code walkthrough video. Today we'll be looking at 2022 Day 21. Okay, so the monkeys are back. These are the same monkeys from Day 11 that were throwing our stuff around. And they come with even more arithmetic this time. One of the elephants realizes that you don't speak monkey and comes help you interpret. It turns out that they overheard you talking about trying to find the grove and they'll show you a shortcut if you can answer their riddle. Each monkey has a job. It will either yell a specific set constant number, or it will yell the result of a math operation. All of the ones that yell a constant know their number from the start, but the ones that yell a math operation need to wait for two other monkeys to yell a number, and they might also be waiting on other monkeys. Your job is to figure out what number the monkey named Root will yell before the monkeys themselves can f uh, figure it out. So for example, here's a list of all of the monkeys. So root would yell what PPPW yells plus what SJMN yells. DBPL would be one of the constant monkeys, so it will yell five from the very start. PPPW will yell the result of CCZH divided by LFQF. And CCZH is in turn SLLZ plus LGVD. So you can see that this goes down quite far. Now, Technically speaking, you could parse this into a dependency tree where each monkey points to the ones before it, and this would have to be a totally ordered tree, otherwise there would be no solution. However, at the cost of a small amount of efficiency, we can instead just keep looping through the list repeatedly and building up our results. Now technically, if this list were ordered in a very bad way, this would end, us, end up costing us potentially n iterations, where n is the number of monkeys. If the last one were the only constant one, and then each one de depended on the one right after it. So we'd have to loop through n times to actually get to the end, uh, which would make this O of n squared. However, this is not going to happen, and the amount of time you'd waste writing the parsing is going to cost way more time anyway. Plus, it's 2255, so n squared of that is actually not very slow. Okay. And so that's all just describing exactly how this works. And it is important to note here that the division here is not floor division. So you will get fractions and you will need to deal with that. Um, if you want to be safe, you can use a infinite precision fraction class such as the Python built-in class fraction, but I found that unnecessary. Okay, and so in the example, root will yield 152. What does the monkey named Root yell? So we will start by storing up all of the monkeys in a map, which will store which number each monkey has. And then we will repeatedly go through the input. So the way we can do this in Python is, it's a bit hacky, but what we can do is first do x equals line dot strip for line in open zero. That just gets the input lines. And then we can do for a in x, x dot append a. So in Python, you can actually mutate a list while you're iterating through it. And if the list grows longer, the loop will keep going. So we can see this example in an infinite loop like so. For, uh, let's say, a equals 1, 2, 3. For x in a, x a dot append x, print a. Uh, so, yeah, print a. So you can see that a is constantly growing and we just keep looping through it as it grows. So this will make x theoretically large, so you could also like do it more smartly, but in the interest of saving time, I did it this way. Because today's problem was very clearly quite easy, and so I needed to get through it quickly, and even with my coding speed, I was still only 63rd place on the first part. Okay, so We'll split on the colon and we'll get the monkey name and the expression, like so. Now, if the expression is a, dig uh, is a digit string, so expression dot is digit, then we can immediately just do monkey's name equals int expr. Otherwise, if it isn't a number, then it is the result of an expression, and the expressions always fit the form plus, times, minus, or divide. So we can do it this way. Left, 
operation right equals expression dot split on the spaces. So this will split, for example, this into MCWL is the left monkey's name, plus is the operation, and VJWH is the right monkey's uh, operation. So now we can do this. If left in monkeys, so if the left monkey has a name, uh, if the left monkey's value is already known, and right in monkeys, then we can proceed. Otherwise, we need to wait until later, so we just do x.append a to process this sometime later. Okay, so if left is in monkeys and right is in monkeys, then what we can do is monkeys name equals, and then we can use eval. So instead of writing out a new uh, lambda function for each of the four operations, it's easier for us to just eval directly because uh, le monkeys left and monkeys right will be numbers, and then we can just add the operation in the middle. So stir monkeys left plus op plus stir monkeys right. Or using format strings, you can get that a bit shorter into And that also saves you from needing to do the string conversions yourself. And at the end, we should just be able to print out monkeys root and get the answer. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, I'm kind of surprised by how easy this problem was relatively. But then again, I am using Python. And abusing eval does make this problem significantly easier. Plus, the string parsing in Python is just way easier. So that's it for part one. For part two, we'll need to abuse another Python feature. Okay, so due to some kind of monkey elephant human mistranslation, you misunderstood a few details about the riddle. You got the wrong job for the monkey named root. It's not the right math operation. Root should actually be equal sign as its operation. So it will still listen for two numbers from the same two monkeys, but it will now check to make sure that the two numbers match. So we need to change this a bit. We'll do that later once we figure out the rest of it. Also, you got the wrong monkey for the job, starting with H-U-M-N. It's actually not a monkey, it's U. It stands for human. You also got the job wrong. You need to figure out what number to yell so that roots equality check will pass. So essentially, you need to figure out which number to yell such that when all of the processing is done, root will give, uh, will see that the left and the right monkeys yelled the same values. Now, looking at 301, you might be tempted to just search by linearly going up, but if you see what the actual puzzle answer is, it's quite clear that this can't possibly work. Um, it sort of gives you a bit of a hint here when you see that this number is so massive. And so the way you have to do this is to backtrack the computations. Now in Python we can do this very easily using a library known as SymPy, which stands for Symbolic Python. Um, ignore the fact that VS Code thinks I don't have this uh, installed. So we'll initialize monkeys with one value. H-U-M-N is going to be sympy.symbol x. What sympy.symbol does is it essentially creates a new variable. And when you try to perform arithmetic operations on this variable, it will just modify the variable. So if you divide x by 2, it will just become a fraction known as x divided by 2. If you then add 3 to that, it will become the value x divided by th 2 plus 3. And the nice thing about this is that it will still do the appropriate math reduction. So if you take x divided by 2 and multiply it by 2, you just get x back. We'll also add an extra thing here. If name in monkeys, then we continue. So basically, we don't reprocess if we already know the value. And we just need to add a couple more things here. So eval isn't going to work anymore here. Let's just write out the operations ourselves. So ops equals plus sign will be lambda x, y, x plus y. And then we repeat that for all of the four operations. And so now we do it this way. Monkey's name equals the operation function applied to monkeys left and monkeys right. And finally, we do another uh, quick thing here. If name is equal to root, then we bypass the operation and instead perform the check. And at the end, we'll break out of the loop. 
So if the name is equal to root, then we need to check to see if the left and the right are equal. One of these is a variable expression, actually possibly both. So how do we solve to make sure they're equal to each other? Well, SymPy also has a function for that called literally solve. SymPy.solve will take an expression and return the value needed to get it to zero. In this case, we only have one variable x, so we, in order to make sure that the left and right are equal, we just subtract them and set it to zero. So in other words, print SymPy.solve monkeys left minus monkeys right. And if we run that, oh, yeah, we get a slight precision errors. So one last thing we need to do is this int thing here won't work because when we do the division, we'll get uh, floating point numbers and those aren't exactly precise enough. Actually, is this answer close to right? Yeah, okay, it is actually the right answer if you round it, although I wouldn't be confident in there being no significant errors. So that's where the third part comes in. SymPy has, an inf SymPy has infinite precision because when you divide two by three, you don't get 0 0.666, etc. You just get two over three. SymPy stores it internally as that. So you can do SymPy.integer to convert the uh, digit string into an integer. And then when you do the math, it stays within the SymPy's realm. So everything we're doing math with is either a SymPy variable or a SymPy number. And so it'll stay at infinite precision and the solve function will be able to return us the exact value. So honestly, this very much feels almost like cheating. The problem is made so easy by the fact that in Python you can just abuse eval and have really simple string parsing. And then in part two, you can just import SymPy, represent yourself as a variable, get free infinite precision, and then just have SymPy solve the expression for you. Now, during the contest, I didn't remember how SymPy.solve worked. So if you actually print out monkeys left and monkeys right, it's not too hard to hand solve it. Like this is what you'll get. Um, let me make that a bit better. Like it's not the worst thing in the world to hand solve, especially because one of the sides isn't an expression. So you just need to take this number um, subtract it from this to get that value, equate those two, and then multiply by 147 over 5888, uh, which I just plugged into Wolfram Alpha. So you can do that too. Um, I'm not going to walk you through how to do this without SymPy if you want to f like know how to do it just using native Python. But you could theoretically emulate this process by defining your own classes for like the variable um, the result of addition, the result of multiplication, stuff like that. Um, alternatively, you could just construct a dependency tree and trace all the values back. Um, because it, I'm assuming that in all of the inputs, one of the monkeys isn't an expression, just to make it a bit simpler. So you could like trace back the dependency tree get the value of the monkey that doesn't require your input, and then set the other monkey equal to that and trace back and see what the monkeys all the way back down the dependency tree would need to be, and eventually you will arrive at the correct value for itself. Um, but that would take a lot of time to implement, and it's just not really necessary once Python already has something so convenient for us. So that's also why I jumped up so high in ranks from part one to part two, because Python just lets you cheat, basically. So that's all for uh, today's video. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 22.